was a, my first children's book, Sally Gray and the Stars, was like, that was the transition. It was like a big job, you know, took that and I think I'd finished the job and then uh, I was looking for work again and I realized I don't have a job anymore. I'd like, as in I quit my job in the process of doing this children's book. And then I was like, I guess this is my job now. As in like, if I'm doing this full time, if I'm so wrapped up in it that I've not realized that I've quit or been sacked, I can't remember. Uh, I guess this is my job. Favorite illustrator growing up, I think was Bill Watterson from Calvin and Hobbes. I don't know, it was the first time I'd seen uh, illustrations and humor worked in uh, working in tandem. And that was huge for me. Like uh, I remember I was a massive fan of Tintin and Asterix growing up, but this was like, you could really see his personality coming through, which was huge for me. And I'm still a massive fan of his stuff. My parents are both filmmakers. Uh, my mum's a, a makeup artist and uh, my dad's an assistant director. Um, and my my mum never went to school. Her, her mum was a teacher, so she was taught at home. And then uh, she had this great idea that she was not going to send her kids to school. I, I didn't go to school, never sat an exam in my entire life. I, don't, I didn't do a junior cert. I didn't do a leaving cert. A big element of that was that my parents were incredibly intelligent and incredi incredible people and they were available to us like they were there they wanted to have conversations if we had any questions we would find out if they didn't know the answer we would get the book that had the answer and also they they never seemed to get sick of just exploring ideas and just kind of like you know finding out about stuff but like being on sets as a kid <laughs> like i'd love to say it was really exciting but it was really boring the fascinating stuff for me was all the prep work. Like my mom's a makeup artist, so weeks before any shoot, she'd be researching stuff. And uh, I, like when we were really young, she worked on uh, the Knights of Tirna Nog, which is uh, like a, it was like the Irish version of the Power Rangers. Um, so weeks before she started that shoot, she was like looking up uh, these kind of mystical creatures like goblins and fairies and stuff like that. And she was, I would help like sketching out like designs for ears that she would have to you know add like prosthetics to people to make them look like fairies and elves and things like that. That was like fascinating to me and then the same for my dad he would research uh, films he was going to be working on. Um, he did one called The Rat Catcher and he had to um, do research about Scottish ganglands and stuff like that and you know like he'd be excited kind of learning about this stuff and then I would you know I was super excited about ganglands in Scotland. Uh, I feel like I'm working in the same business as my parents. Uh, it's like, I know I'm, I, I mean, I, I started out in animation, so that was kind of film. And I ended up in illustration, but it still feels like the same process to me. It's still like, I, I'm, I'm, if I'm building an illustration, it feels like building to me. Um, it's, it's about researching it, and it's about telling a story, and everything I do has to have a narrative. Like the way I see illustration is that you're, you're getting a snapshot of something that is in the process of happening and you're getting like a slice of that. But like for me, it's a whole narrative. Like if I do the illustration, I see the beginning, middle and end and I pick the, the best bit, I hope, of like of that narrative. I'm a complete geek when it comes to uh, just doing an illustration, as in like every, every job I've done, I just completely nerd out and uh, I mean, uh, I don't know, it, it, by being authentic that way, by like doing the research and kind of delving into things and really like deep diving into a subject for a while, you, you never run out of ideas. One of my favorite podcasts is this design podcast. It's called 99% Invisible and it's presented by a guy called Roman Mars. I, I sent him a message on Facebook. I was like, your show is cool. And that was pretty much it. And then he wrote back on Facebook and was like, your stuff is cool. And then he contacted me and said, I'm doing a Kickstarter um, and I have to give away a gift. Uh, is there any chance you'd do a poster? My pitch to him was to create a city out of all the episodes. On paper, that sounded like a great idea. It's like take all these like really obscure kind of notions from each podcast and then kind of build them into a single image. Uh, what I wasn't counting on was that you would have to be as big a nerd as I was about his podcast to get any of the references 
Yes, I mean, like, I, I really did geek out on it, and I, like, I really, like, they're amazing stories, and the reason I love them is because they're so detailed and they're so obscure. One of the, the main takeaways from 99% Invisible was um, they have a motto, which is always read the plaque. And basically the idea is that you, know, you go somewhere and there's usually a plaque outside a building, and there's, and go looking for them because there's plaques all over Dublin City that nobody ever reads, uh, and they are fascinating. There's some really weird ones. Um, but he says always read the plaque because it kind of gives you this sort of insight into the city that you live in. Uh, so I stuck I stuck a plaque on the bottom of the poster with like the decoder of like what all the things were and what the references were. And uh, the first email I got back from Roman Mars was like, we're not sure how to work out like what all the references are. And I was like, read the plaque. Um, <clears throat> the Dublin creative scene it, like it is a family it, it, like it, that's that's what it feels like and it feels super supportive like you know it, so much so that you you feel I, I don't want to say trapped but like uh, it's so good you know you're not going to get that anywhere else it doesn't, it doesn't seem like if you went to New York or London or any of the other kind of like quintessential creative cities you wouldn't get that family sort of atmosphere that sort of support system that you get here it's incredible i've done i've done a few like talks at colleges and things like that and i've uh and you know working in dublin you're always trying to lift up um people who are coming out and like you know starting for the first time as designers and illustrators uh so i have like nuggets that i try and get in there whenever i get the chance first and foremost is you have to do your best work that's it it's like as easy and as hard as that sounds you just have to do your best work on every single piece because it's your calling card like whatever you did last that's what people are going to see you might be doing an idea and get halfway through and go it's not as cool as i thought it was going to be and that's when you have to either start again or make it work or you know, just like you know find a way to make it the greatest thing you've ever done that you're so excited that you need to show everybody because uh it's it's how you progress i think I, I know I know people really struggle with um, getting a style and I certainly did when I started that it's like this huge thing that you have to get your style and it has to stand out from everybody else and the thing that freed me up from that was you let go of trying to get a style and you focus on personality like you've got your personality and as long as every piece you do you're just trying to get as much of yourself into it as possible it automatically is original it, it automatically is you know, it's, it's got a style to it because it's just you. And I think the problem is people get hung up on uh, appropriating a particular style. Like, they, I, I, wanna, I wanna look sharp, I wanna look modern, or I wanna look like handmade, or like this is my look or whatever. And all you're doing is just uh, taking something that's, that you've seen. It's not coming from an inside place. And as soon as you start doing that, as soon as you kind of like, how much of, my guts can I get into this then it just it like as soon as you finish it, you're like that is totally original it must be it must be a year and a half ago Roisin my girlfriend uh, decided to set up um, a zine a magazine uh, about confessional writing um, and she she got in touch with Mick Minogue who uh, did the first cover um, and is uh, an artistic genius in all facets of life and uh, be, you, the whole issue becomes about that artist because they can sort of do their whole personality, do their whole thing, um, which is really special. So like uh, she, she's worked with a selection of some of the best artists in Dublin. Mick Minogue did the first one, uh, Aaron Quinn uh, did the second one, uh, and he's an incredible animator based in New York. And then we had Kathy Burke, who spoke at Bread and Butter and is an incredible artist. And then the third one was myself. And, the, and then the fourth one was Fuchsia Macquery. And then the final one, I don't know, this might be an exclusive, but um, uh, Rob Murillo, who's an incredible illustrator, um, or Acus Murillo as he goes by, is doing the, the sixth uh, issue, which is the final in that series. It'll kind of, it'll, it'll finish out that like series of six and then I think it'll be uh, released quarterly after that. Uh, I recently spoke at the Bread and Butter talk. It, it, what was fantastic about it was it like, it helped me organize the last couple of years into something that was like, uh, that could be understood in a couple of minutes. It, like you, you sort of 
took all your work and all your thoughts and all your kind of like processes and then you had to sort of present them in a you know easy to like a bite-sized sort of way it, it, it forces you to put a, a waypoint like in in that moment and say like this is where I am now and this is where I've come from and gives you an idea of where you might go because you can sort of look at it look at it as a whole and it kind of it stopped me in my tracks for a second and kind of made me like consider uh, more like scrutinize how I did stuff and made me think okay well can I tweak that or like should I try something new or like I suppose if you're if you're forced to analyze how you do something, it gives you a chance to take ownership of it and maybe steer it in a different direction. <laughs>